Hello there, kids. It is I, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming with another episode of Fallout 4. All right, when we left off, uh, we finally made it into the Institute, and uh, I'm hoping that this will record properly, <laughs> because I've already had a soft lock uh, trying to boot up the game, and that's not a good sign. <laughs> but I'm hoping that everything's good and working now. So... This is a crucial moment. We have finally made it inside. And now we're going to see where we should go to finally get our son back. Institute Lab Coke. Oh, that just rages, rages, raises my intelligence. That's a good thing. I don't really need it, but... Alright. Button. What? What? Oh. I had to go all the way inside <laughs> for that to work. I can only imagine what you've heard. What you think of us. Okay. I'd like to show you that you may have the wrong impression. Well, I mean, you're going to have to do a lot to fix that. Welcome to the Institute. Oh, this is the reality of the Institute. This place, these people, the work we do. For over a hundred years, we've dedicated ourselves to humanity's survival. Are you sure about that? Research, countless experiments and trials, a shared vision of how science can help shape the future. It has never been easy. And our actions are often misinterpreted by those above ground. Yeah, I'd say. Someday, perhaps, we can show them what we've accomplished. But for now, we must remain underground. There's too much at stake here to risk it all. As you've seen, things above are... unstable. Yeah. I'd like to talk to you about what we can do for everyone. What? Well, you can do. do. You are here for a okay. specific, very personal reason. You are here for your son. Yeah, I am. And you know this. You must have expected me coming. This is. This seems very lead. By the nose here. This seems like uh, this path was set specifically for me to follow. I'm not entirely sure if I'm walking into a trap or not. Huh. Well, another elevator to go upwards okay sure all right I guess we're gonna stop here that is that is quite a thing there okay it's is that wow that's a lot of good stuff look at that Oops. Oh. And I can't... Sean? Huh? Yes, I'm Sean. Sean. I've been looking for you for... so long. Who are you? Sean, it's me. I'm... I'm your dad. Father, what's going on? What's happening? We're leaving this place. Together. Okay, Sean? What's going on? Father? Father! Sean, open the door. I don't know you. 
Go away. Father. What? Father, help me. There's someone here. Help me. What? Please, Sean. I'm your father. Talk to me. Just open the door. Father? Father, help me. He's trying to take me. Father? Father, help me. Sean. S923, recall code Cirrus. What? Fascinating, but disappointing. The child's responses were not at all what I anticipated. He's a prototype, you understand. We're only just now beginning to explore the effects of extreme emotional stimuli. Please try and keep an open mind. I recognize that you are emotional and that your journey here has been fraught with challenges. Let's start anew. I am Father. Welcome to the Institute. What was that? Father? That's your name? Your title? Father is my unofficial title. It's what I've come to mean to the people of the Institute, just as as you mean to your son, to Sean. God. All we're missing are the teacups and the, the white rabbit. <laughs> ah, levity. Excellent. A sure sign that you adapt quickly to stressful environments. But yeah, I need sure. to realize that this situation is far more complicated than you could have imagined you have traveled very far yeah i figured that was gonna happen a great deal to find your son well your tenacity and dedication have been rewarded okay it's good to finally meet you after all uh... this time it's me i am sean i am your son uh How is that even possible? I know this is a lot to take in. In the vault, you had no concept of the passage of time. You were released from your pod and went searching for the son you'd lost. But then you learned that your son was no longer an infant, but a ten-year-old boy. You believed that ten years had passed. Is it really so hard to accept that it was not 10, but 60 years? That is the reality, and here I am. Raised by the Institute, and now its leader. <sighs> Hell of a story. But... I guess... It does make sense. I'm glad you're willing to accept the truth. It's quite encouraging. At that time, the year 2227, the Institute had made great strides in synth production. But it was never enough. Scientific curiosity and the goal of perfection drove them ever onward. What they wanted was the perfect machine. Okay. So they followed the best example thus far. The human being, All right. walking, talking, fully articulate, capable of anything. So the weird science experiments needed specimens. That's why they took you. In a manner of speaking, yes. Okay. The Institute endeavored to create synthetic organics. The most logical starting point, of course, was human DNA. Plenty of that was available, of course, but it had all become corrupted. In this wasteland, radiation affected everyone. So much Even like Fallout 1. Even in to shield themselves from the world above, members of the Institute had been exposed. Another source was necessary. But then the Institute found me after discovering records from Vault 111, an infant. Frozen in time, protected from the radiation-induced mutations that had crept into every other human cell in the Commonwealth. I was exactly what they needed. 
And so it was my DNA that became the basis of the synthetic organics used to create every human-like synth you see today. Thus, I am father. Their father. Through science, we are family. The synths, me, and you. Sean. It's really you. It really is. I know you must have questions. Please. Anything I can do to help you understand. Your mother. She never got to see you grow up? Yes. What happened to her was... I've gone over the records of the incident, of course. It seems her death was an unfortunate bit of collateral damage. Unfortunate bit of collateral damage. Collateral damage? damage? Is that all she was to you? I forget that it's been such a short time for you. I don't have any direct memories. And I've had my entire life to cope with a loss. Has okay. it always been easy? Of course not. But I've That's done fair. my best to move on and live my life. For many years, I never questioned who my parents were. I accepted my situation, and that was that. With old age comes regret. And asking what if more often. That's true. But what matters now is that you and I have a chance to begin again. What else can I say to ease your mind? Kellogg. He worked for you? Kellogg. He was an institute asset long before I arrived here. It wasn't until I became director that I learned of all the things he'd done. What kind of man he was. You knew the man was a psychopath, but you used him anyway? <laughs> Would you have preferred that I turned him loose on the Commonwealth? At least keeping him on a short leash kept the collateral damage to a minimum. The Institute took advantage of Kellogg's vicious nature. I will freely admit that. Institute technology prolonged his life and his usefulness far beyond any normal human lifespan. He never failed the Institute, but his cruelty became more apparent with every completed objective. I won't lie. It's no coincidence your path crossed his. It seemed a fitting way to allow you, us, to have some amount of revenge. What else can I say to So that was mind? planned by you too. Ooh, boy, that's a lot to unpack. Okay. Um, I paused it because I know he's going to make comments for how long it's going to take. Um, wow. This is Sean. This is our kid. It's been 60 years, not 10. Of course, that does help keep the timeline for Fallout 3 intact, where by that point they already had human synths, and they had actually started to roam around to as far as the Capital Wasteland. So, at least the timeline makes sense at that point. And I do understand the cues that it's taking from Fallout 1 that the vaults were the only places that had pure, uncorrupted, by radiation, DNA. Much like they needed that to create the stronger generation of super mutants in Fallout 1. 
say, stronger, more uh, rather intelligent beyond compare, really. Trying to create the next evolution in humanity, unfortunately making them sterile in the process, so making it a moot point. Um... This is our kid. He's uh, yeah, he's had all that time to come to terms with what happened to him, what happened to his family. What happened to his mother and what happened to me. And that would explain why we were called the backups. Because if it didn't work out with the kid, they could always use us. Mind you, we probably wouldn't last as long as Sean has. But it probably would have helped. I don't know. I don't know. Jeez. Oh, All right. Yeah, let's. So you're in charge of the Institute? I am the acting director, yes. I spent decades working to reach this point. It's a responsibility I take very seriously. The Institute. It's important. It really is humanity's best hope for the future, no matter what those above ground might think of us. But... Director? Why you? I was the most qualified for the position. Obviously. I've lived my life within these walls. Dedicated to science like every other member of the Institute. My hard work has paid off. Ultimately, the Commonwealth has nothing to fear from us. Whatever you've seen or heard, I know I can convince you of that. Just give me time. I know there's more for us to discuss, but the Institute is on the verge of some important breakthroughs. Your presence would be appreciated as we approach them. I've been a part of something amazing here. I've helped to build a life for myself and the people of the Institute. And now, after all these years, you have an opportunity to help with that. Doesn't that intrigue you? Isn't that what you want? Maybe. I... I don't know. This is so much to take in. I know. And I am sorry. You have been through so much in such a short time. The Institute can provide a better life than anything above ground. You've been in the Commonwealth. You've seen what it's like. I assure you that you are better off with us. How can you say that? How can you be so dismissive of all those people? Everything they've done? Because it is the simple truth. And I believe you know it too. I simply ask that you give the Institute, me, a chance. A chance to show you what I've been telling you. We really do have humanity's best interest at heart. Will you take that chance? I just don't know. Just give it time. Give the Institute a chance. The Institute is now your home as much as it is mine. Please take some time, get to know it. Meet the people you'll be working with. You want to introduce yourself to the division heads. Dr. Fillmore in facilities, Dr. AO in SRB, 
Dr. Holdren in Bioscience. And finally, Dr. Lee in Advanced Systems. They've all been notified of your arrival, of course. Meet them, and then we'll discuss what comes next. Alrighty. And this is a bug. Alright. So. We're going to meet all the division heads. Talk to them and then come back. Okay. Well then. Okay. That was... I had to eventually try to move him. It was clear that he wasn't going to move himself. All right. Um. Wow. I'm just going to end the episode here for right now. Thank you all so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more. And click the like button if you like this particular video. And share in comments. We can bring more people into this community. We can talk about the games we're playing together. And I will see you all in the next episode. This has been the one the only Stray Cat playing games and finding out the leader of the Institute is our son. And it's been 60 years since all of that happened in the vault. And this changes things for you. <laughs>